quais são as respostas. Um, a good question. If her tummy is a baby terrorist, what does that mean for her? Let's find out. It is too damning to you know. If you have not read the recent expose on our JMS Minister of Communications of Digital Economy, Ali Issa Ibrahim Thomas, in deliberate history of espousing extremist religious ideologies, I suggest you go ahead and catch up quickly. It is not the type of story that you fully understand by word of mouth. Almost a century and seven years since Nigeria was shittily put together by British for economic and administrative convenience. The basic difference that distinguished the then Southern Protectorate from the Northern Protectorate continued to play a central role in the malfunctioning of the country. The intractable religious differences, compounded by the fact that a third of Nigeria's 36 states are already operating the Islamic Sharia law, have led to several communal conflicts and violent clashes of the past, and continue to predominate the fragile inter ethnic interreligious economic and political relationships between the countries of north and south. According to the Pew Research Center, Nigeria has the fifth largest Muslim population and the sixth largest Christian population in the world, which makes Nigeria the country with the largest Muslim Christian population in Africa. On matters of public policy or advocacy, religion and politics in Nigeria are not far apart from each other. And as the citizens are often sensitive to religious decision discussions, with a zeal that is borderline fanatical, many times social political decisions are made with careful considerations of the religious impact such decisions will have on the country's tenacious, multi-ethnic and multi-religious societal fabric. However, the religious worldview of the Sunni dominated Muslims of Nigeria, particularly its particularly its committant offshoot known as the Salafi sect, strikingly believes the lies that of their Christian counterparts. And although there are different denominations of Christians in Nigeria, none of them can be said to, to espouse such extremist doctrines and philosophies as their Salafi counterparts. For as long as Nigeria continues to exist, the North and South will always be suspicious of each other. And it is within this context of national that Nigeria's telecommunications database and central control house was handed to an extremist political actor who may well have compromised whatever sensitive information exists in that system. As a Muslim imam and scholar, Nigeria's current Minister of Communications is evidenced to have repeatedly canonized and espoused extremist Islamic ideologies that extolled root terrorists like the late Osama bin Laden, former Al Qaeda leader, who was responsible for the deaths of thousands of people, including the famous 9 11 terrorist attacks in the United States. Yet, all this seems to have been ignored when Nigeria's President General Muhammad Buhari, a religious by God himself, appointed Patamu to serve in a public position where sensitive data can be easily accessed and used for nefarious purposes. 
It is beyond comprehension how an abroad religious icon, one with distinguished extremist intent, could have skills through what I suppose would have been a rigorous labyrinth of deep background checks by Nigeria State Security Services, SSS, except of course none was done as all such findings were deliberately ignored by someone or some persons. For a castable styled institution of oppression, enforced disappearance and intimidation like the SSS, it is nearly impossible to have missed such compelling details about Pentamin's world identity as a gradualist extremist. And even if that were the case, it would be unreasonable to assume that the president appointed a man of whom he has to do or no knowledge. In any case, there is more than one culprit from this sordid exposure. Surely, part of it, but also those involved in covering up a sordid and extremist ideology, including the president, Jimmy Bukhari. As this expose suggests, this may be a This must be this this might be an epiphanic moment for Nigerians to understand why there has been such an overwhelming pro not love sidedness in the appointments of Nigeria's president since they came into power and why Fulani Hartsmen or bandits have been working our work almost on challenge to the point that Sheikh Gumi is now is now asking for amnesty for that. I would I also would not dismiss the possibility of an ethno religious side agenda of the eventual salabilization of Nigeria. Now more than before, a time is initiative to link need to sing card or to be viewed with the utmost suspicious and circumspect. Given the witty information that is now known to the public about Eastern Pentamic, nothing will take Nigeria close to justice more than is needed for the resignation or attract dismissal by the president, after which an exhaustive investigation is activity so far, which reasonably can be adjudged as mandatory to public and national security might be done by development agencies. No society that is serious about governance and national security would leave Nigeria's president out of this mess. He appointed Patamir, and who knows how many more Patamirs are in his northern Muslim dominated cabinet. And if the National Assembly would for once not be characteristically lifeless, and timid. A special independent panel of inquiry that will include the president and all his appointed cabinet members as its subject of interest will be immediately set up to make sure this matter is properly investigated. The quicker Nigeria can do this, the sooner it will rid itself of extremists masquerading as patriots in public offices. So then we are with the the that's the question asked so that uh, if you are saying part of me it's a baby mm -hmm. terrorist. So what does that make worry? And all the patterns and all the boaries. <laughs> oh my God, Nigeria, Nigeria, boaries, deterrents. Yeah. yeah, there you have it, guys. Until I come your way again, ah, I just drop this. Bye.